Do you think AI will replace you? In the beginning, I was like, I'm hoping not, but I think I'm just a little bit sad because uh, Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we are actually having a little bit of a different video because we are going to Kotlin Conf in Copenhagen and we're going to take you with us. So here we are, uh, sunny, rainy Denmark at Gotland Kong, uh, and we're going to take a look what kind of cool speakers we can uh, take a listen to, have some nice interviews, and just lead you around. I'm here with Victor, who is the team lead of the Compose Multi-Platform developer team. And I think you're very curious about uh, how things were like uh, on the development end for Compose Multi-Platform. So Victor, what have been the main challenges uh, in developing uh, CMP? There are a lot of challenges. So first of all, we have a lot of targets for the Compose Multi-Platform. We started with desktop, but then we expanded to iOS and to web. So web is still better, but we announced iOS support as stable just a few weeks ago. and all platforms have their own features, small quirks and so on. And we try uh, to do that so that developers using Compose Multi-Platform do not need to think about them at all. They have the same experience on all platforms. And so that requires a lot of work uh, behind the scenes uh, to make everything as smooth as possible. Okay, um, the, the big claim behind uh, CMP is usually that it's uh, fully native on, on each platform, uh, which is usually a performance advantage. Many people from a community like to compare things with other options they have, like Flutter, for example. Do you have any data or experience on how much more performant um, com uh, Kotlin and Compose multi-platform apps are compared to these alternatives? We do not directly compare Compose with other multi-platform frameworks. As you've just seen, for example, with CodenConf Keynote, we compare it to native apps uh, and we We've seen from the data that they are just as good as native apps or a little bit like add some few megabytes of download size to the app. Uh, but we think that it is reasonable uh, price for, for the development experience and user experience we can provide. And something we've just seen at the keynote uh, is, is Hot Reload. I personally haven't tried it out yet. I, I just saw that it's something that's coming. What is the current state of it? Is it already fully working? Or is there, are there still some, some things to work on? It is officially in alpha, but it doesn't mean anything because it only uh, affects your development environment. It only runs on your development machine. So you may try it in your production application right now if you have a desktop target for Compose multi-platform. And you may probably want to have one because it really speeds up the development. It, it updates almost instantly uh, the UI so you can prototype uh, the UI very very fast and it's enjoyable and you, once you try it you don't want to go back and work working without it okay those are really interesting insights <laughs> So I am here with Jordan from South Africa. Very nice to meet you, Jordan. Do you think AI will replace you? I guess it depends on how well I do my job. I'm hoping not, but I think I'm one of the people that views AI as a tool. So 
in order not to be replaced. I need to learn about it. I need to keep up with the trends and see what I can do to actually apply it to my own job, make me a better developer. Awesome, have a lot of fun on the conference. Thanks, Philip, I definitely will. Are you personally afraid of AI? No, no, I'm definitely not afraid of AI. I'm just a little bit sad because uh, writing code is for me like uh, reading poem, doing some uh, uh, craftsmanship uh, work. And I'm afraid that AI uh, will just give it from me. Every first Tuesday, we have that as a, as a routine. Uh, yes, every first really? Tuesday, every oh, first awesome. month, I w we are watching it and uh, we discuss it. We sometimes like, we often I agree with you with something that it doesn't agree with you. And one thing which we really like is that you are testing the solutions and you are also sharing with us some failures, something to, it's not working super efficiently. Uh, is it really nice that this is the super important for us as the developers? So Jacob actually just approached me and uh, told me at their company, they, uh, they, they made it a ritual, uh, a monthly ritual to uh, watch some of my videos with the team. And then sometimes they agree, sometimes they disagree, but they always learn something. They always have something to debate. And this is, this is like the biggest compliment ever that sometimes someone makes it a ritual to watch your videos. Um, so, so that's very cool. Uh, people approach you like that and tell you that, uh, that they watch your videos. In general, I can only say uh, debate about technical topics. Don't just take my videos here as the, as the holy grail, as the only source of truth. Use them to learn something. Use them to find out about new approaches, about um, new options that you can apply to your project. And then use that to debate in your team. If you disagree, that's fine. Then you maybe still learn something. If you agree, then even better, then uh, you can directly adopt it. But, but talk about things in the end that you learn about. Talk about technical challenges. Talk about answer people's questions. That's also how you learn something. Ask questions. That's obviously how you learn something. Um, just talk to each other. That's uh, the, the main idea why I also, what I also structured the mobile dev campus around. And in general, if you see me somewhere, you can of course approach me. We can take a picture. We can have a little chat. Um, I'm, I'm really thankful for everyone uh, among you. So just hit me up and we can have a little chat. All right, now I'm here with Dan, who you maybe know from Instagram, but if not, then what are you actually doing? So I'm a mobile software engineer. I've been working with both iOS and Android for the past almost 10 years, and now I'm attending uh, Kotlin Conf. Are you personally afraid of it, of the future of AI for developers? In the beginning, I was like, oh my God, AI will take what I love about mobile development, like me writing the code and seeing the results. But then I realized it's not about writing the code. It's about, it's more, the enjoyment comes from building the apps. So we will still have that. We will still have the enjoyment of building the apps. It will just be a different kind of process building it. And I don't think it will literally replace developers. It will just change the way we work and, of course, shift our focus to more like architectural um, work and stuff in that direction. Awesome. Where can people learn more about you? So the best place would be on Instagram at dan.mobile.dev. I also have a YouTube channel where I posted a few videos and I would like to uh, continue and post more there. A TikTok account uh, also, that's fresh for like a month and a half. And on LinkedIn, then I-L-I-E-S, and you can find me. Thank you so much for your time. We are here in front of the Juni stand and we're here with... Hi, Anastasia. And Anastasia is apparently responsible for uh, some part of Juni development or marketing. What do you exactly. do here? So I work in marketing for Juni. I'm the one who tries, you know, to make Juni louder. So developers could actually know about that. <laughs> okay, and what would you say? How does Juni make my audience's life easier and better as a developer? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think it's, it can do quite a lot, actually. So the first, I would actually recommend to use Juni for like the things that you don't want to do, because this is what and this is why we actually do our AI. We want developers to feel like the full control of the codes, but at the same time, we don't want them to do some boring stuff, you know? So the first one, I would probably recommend to do some refactoring or maybe the unit tests, for example, that you just don't really like 
like to write. And this is a great thing to actually delegate to Juni. Probably the second part is uh, starting the project from scratch, because this is also uh, something that can actually be a really nice starting point. So Juni can actually start something for you, so you could adjust, develop, etc. Um, yeah, so the third part probably would be improving or adding some new feature, because this is what I believe developers can do quite often. And probably Juni can actually offer and propose something else, you know, something outside of the box sometimes. Quite fun. And what kind of LLMs is Juni based on? Do we have the option to choose between these or uh, whatever we prefer? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, we believe that it's our job, not yours, to choose the LLMs depending on the task. So we are currently using the Anthropic models and also the OpenAI, um, but those models can change, of course, depending on the performance, because we are really keen into keeping like the best performance for Juni, also for you guys, so you could actually get the best results and the better results from Juni. All right, that was Kotlin Conf. Um, quick summary. We've seen some talks. We have heard about quite some new products from JetBrains. They're working a lot on AI. I think this is very, uh, very promising direction, especially with uh, with uh, Juni, JetBrains AI assistant. In general, I really like the, the direction Kotlin's heading towards. It's not just for Android after all, um, but there are so many different fields and niches where uh, where I think Kotlin is really one of the best well, the best languages after all to, to build stuff, be it the back end. We have the options Spring Boot, KTOR. Uh, then we have the desktop side with uh, Compose Multi-Platform, iOS, Android. There's so many platforms that we can de develop for all in Kotlin with a lot of shared code. Um, so I will definitely keep on using it uh, as my primary language. And in case uh, you want to join CottonConf in future, it's a yearly event. So you know where to find information, of course, on the JetBrains website. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.